In March, Apple surprised everyone by announcing an update to iPadOS that included dedicated trackpad support. And on top of that, Apple announced the new Magic Keyboard, a brand new keyboard trackpad combo for the iPad Pro lineup. For the past month, I've been using the new Magic Keyboard with the 2020 iPad Pro. And I have to say, despite there being a couple of notable flaws, the Magic Keyboard has completely transformed how I use the iPad. I'm Jason Cipriani, a ZDNet mobile contributor, and here are three things I love about Apple's Magic Keyboard and two things I really don't. First and foremost, it's fast and reliable. The Magic Keyboard connects to the 2018 and 2020 iPad Pro models via Apple's Smart Connector technology. Not only does that provide a pathway for data to go between the two devices, it also powers the Magic Keyboard. Competing iPad keyboard accessories rely on Bluetooth connectivity. That means that they have to have their own battery and you have to worry about keeping it charged. Then there's also that slight delay or lag when waking up the keyboard and connecting to your iPad, as well as when you're typing and what shows up on your iPad screen. With the smart connector, the keyboard, trackpad, and iPad are always connected and always ready for whatever task is at hand. The Magic Keyboard has a real keyboard and a real trackpad. Apple is using the same new keyboard keys, the style of keys, found in the latest MacBook Pro and MacBook Air models. That means you're not going to have keys quitting, quit working on you or getting stuck after just a few weeks of use. And they, better yet, feel amazing. I've been using the Smart Keyboard Folio for the iPad Pro for a couple of years now. And the keys are flat, lack of tactile feel to them, and are otherwise just okay. Typing on the iPad Pro's Magic Keyboard feels like you're typing on a real laptop or desktop keyboard. It's smooth, responsive, they have a loud click, and they're even backlit, which is a nice bonus. As for the trackpad experience, it's great too. There's zero delay between touching the trackpad and when the cursor shows up on the iPad screen, and it responds to gestures or clicks just like you expect. It does take some time to get used to using a trackpad on the iPad and learning when the cursor is going to change shape as you hover over a button or a link. But overall, the Magic Keyboard's trackpad feels like a natural extension of the iPad experience. In fact, I rarely touch the iPad's display anymore. I don't even have to. I can keep my hands near the keyboard and navigate through the iPad's interface all without ever having to raise my hand. It's fantastic. Number three, there's an extra charging port and it's a nice touch. You can find the charging port on the left side of the Magic Keyboard, right inside the hinge, actually. There's an extra USB-C port there that you can plug in your iPad Pro's charger, and its sole purpose is to charge your iPad. By using the keyboard's charging connection, the main USB-C port is now freed up to add any type of accessories, hard drives, or whatever else you may need. And let's be honest, having a cable off the, hang off the side in the middle of your iPad screen wasn't the most aesthetically appealing look anyways. And now for the biggest drawback to Apple's Magic Keyboard for iPad Pro, battery life. Because the iPad is powering the Magic Keyboard, some battery drain is expected. Apple estimates the iPad Pro's battery life at 10 hours. And for the most part, prior to using the Magic Keyboard, that's exactly what I was experiencing. However, with the Magic Keyboard, the iPad Pro's battery life has taken a dive. I'm talking an overall battery life of seven or eight hours. Previously, I had confidence that I could take my iPad on an overnight business trip, leaving any chargers at home and have enough power to get through my journey. Now, I don't think I'll have that same level of confidence. I'll need to pack a charger and take it on the road with me. Again, I expected battery life to take a hit, but I didn't expect it to use as much power as it has. It is powering the backlights after all. I've had success in lowering the impact by turning off the keyboard's backlighting a feature that you don't really need to use unless you're in the dark environment anyways. You can do that by opening the settings app on your iPad and going to General, Keyboard, Hardware Keyboard, and then moving the slider labeled Keyboard Brightness all the way to the left. Now the last thing I don't like about the iPad Pro's Magic Keyboard, the other downside, it's price. It's expensive, like really expensive. The keyboard, the Magic Keyboard for the 11 inch iPad Pro is $299, and for the 12.9 inch model, you're looking at $349 for a keyboard that has a trackpad. 
I bought the Magic Keyboard the moment it went on sale and I don't regret my purchase one bit, but I do wish ladder battery life was better and my bank account wishes it wasn't so expensive. But this lone accessory has completely changed how I use my iPad Pro for work and play. I feel far more productive and efficient with the Magic Keyboard and the new trackpad support. And I cannot wait to see what kind of software improvements Apple has in store down the road. Once again, I'm Jason Cipriani, a ZDNet mobile contributor. Make sure to check out more of my work at ZDNet.com.